So as we go into the word today, we receive revelation knowledge. Something from heaven to us. Something that we need to hear so that we can do what needs to be done. In Jesus' precious name, say this with me. I believe something supernatural has happened my life today in the name of Jesus. I refuse to fear and I receive faith building stronger and stronger within my life in Jesus' precious name. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to be disqualified. I refuse to leave this earth early. I will live length of days, strong, whole, healthy, and wealthy in Jesus' precious name. If you believe that, give the Lord praise and honor and glory today. Come on, give him a shout of praise. And come on, thank him. Thank him. Come on, just thank him. Lift your hands, clap your hands, stomp your feet. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Shout it out. The best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll turn around and say hi to someone else today. You may take your seats. What a beautiful start to a phenomenal service. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. That was so powerful today. Thank you so much. I want you to flip back over there with me, please. And we're going to receive our tithes and offerings just in a couple of minutes. So you can be mindful of that. And amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you, we're here to give to the king today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I get up Tuesday morning. You'd think I'd been hit by a freight truck. <laughs> Amen. Didn't feel too good, but I'm telling you, I was not taken to my bed. Amen. And I believe in the power of the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, I walked and I walked and I walked and I walked and I walked Wednesday and I walked 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 Thursday and I walked and I walked and I walked. And I'm here to tell you today I'm healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Come on, shut it out. I'm healed. Whole. You only crawl into bed if you can't move. Even if you get into bed, you just wiggle that toe. You let something know that you are not lying down to this. You do not cr crawl in there with a bag of cheese and onion lace chips. Put on your Christmas pajamas and say, well, you know, it is the season. Praise the Lord. It is the season to be sneezing. It's not an excuse for days off, I can tell you. Oh, that's not popular. In the name of Jesus, you drive everything out in that name. Josh would turn around and look at me and say, you doing okay, Dad? I said, I'm doing fine. I was about five steps behind the rest of the family, but I was still there. I had pain in my body, my God. I'm telling you, you think somebody was touching me with a pig prodder awful but I said I will not stop in the name of Jesus lift your hands and receive it faith is what frames your world words words spoken in faith not rehearsing the problem not rehearsing the sickness not rehearsing the lack not rehearsing the problem the, the situation the circumstance man you're extreme you have seen nothing yet 
I'm only getting started. I'm only learning some things in my 50s that I wish I knew in my 30s. And I'm learning more in my 50s that you don't lie down to it. Nothing. You lie down to nothing. I remember one time I'm telling we were in Africa and we're very cautious about what we eat overseas and you know we try not to go over to people's houses <laughs> and uh, I don't mean that disrespectfully I just am there to do a job and I don't need to be sick you know my stomach's used to food here and even that's hard to take at times And uh, I remember eating a piece of lettuce, and I thought to myself, mmm. And uh, the next thing, I'm like, I can hardly move. And we're just going into a series of meetings. I think it was Uganda, Kampala, direction. <laughs> Amen. And uh, Pastor Karn had to sit me up in the bed, wash me, dress me. That must have been an amazing thing for her to do. And her and Dr. Harvey got me out into the Jeep. We drove there, and I'm telling you, I was in no fit state to minister. But I tell you something about the anointing. I stepped out into that meeting, and I'm telling you, I did not feel like I could do this. And the moment I stepped around the pulpit, the anointing came on me. Every symptom that I had left. Lift your hand and say, thank God for the anointing. Come on, shout it out today. Thank God for the anointing. Come on, say it one more time. Thank God for the anointing. How many people knows the anointings that work in your body now? Amen. A sickness is trying to enforce its trespassing. The anointing is at work to get it off you, to get it out of you. Thank God for the anointing. I'm going to say again, thank God for the anointing. If you're visiting today, shut it out. Thank God for the anointing. Now, when I I spoke to you from Isaiah 9, this is revelation. And I know many of you have had it for years. But when I was meditating on Isaiah 9, you know, it's Christmas, all those different things. A son is given. And I got to that and the increase of his government and peace knows no end. I said, Father... I never saw that like that ever before. Like I've seen it now after meditating on it by and with the presence of the Lord. That his increase. knows no end. Receive this today. This is not about a prosperity gospel. Please get over that. This is about the goodness of God. The goodness of a father towards his children. And he said, There's only one way we can do this, Jesus. You're going to have to go. Oh, Father, there has to be another way. Come on, Dad. The Father never heard that from Jesus. The same way as Isaac never would have said those words either. 
believe that Jesus would have simply have bowed his head. I will do it. And the eternal plan of the ages, of the lamb slain before the foundation of the world was played out before the cruelty of men who did that to him that did not even know what they were doing. But Jesus came so that we would lack absolutely nothing to seek and to save that which was lost and to destroy the works of the enemy and to present each and every one of us blameless, faultless before the Father. To repair a breach that took place at the time of Adam and Eve. Yes. I don't have time to go into that, but many of you will know that. That Jesus became the door for each and every one of us to enter in at the Father's invitation to the kingdom of heaven. That's when you hear preachers will say, the spirit of God moves upon an individual and draws them to the savior. When you start to feel your heart begin to beat faster, when you begin to sense an awareness of your life, when you begin to sense an awareness that if you were to die right now, where would you be? Where would you go? And that begins to captivate our thoughts. Even during this, this week, some light conversations within my family, you want to join into them someday. Dad, how many people's going to make it? I don't know. But I know this, that for God so loved the world that he gave his son and his son said yes. And I don't believe he just did that thinking he'd just get a few. And I believe that's where Brother Reinhard Bunke got that, hell empty and heaven full. But the increase of his government in a world that seems to be falling apart. We are assured of the increase of his government, the increase of his peace. Come on, don't you love him today? I love him with all my heart. Sing that with a sound. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. The Son of God, the Son of Man. Given to us. Come on, he's so worthy. Jesus, God's holiness display. The Son of God, the Holy One. Even for us, and his 
His kingdom will know no end. That's my and Jesus. And His glory shall know no bounds. For the majesty and power for His kingdom's king has come. And his kingdom's reign, and, and his is. kingdom's rule, and his kingdom's power and authority. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. So as much as he gave, this is why we come in services and we give back to him because he who did not withhold his own son, give everything. And that's why when you can read just a simple text of Isaiah 9, you can see very clearly the intent of a father. I have given you everything. Do not doubt me for a minute. Do not doubt me for a second. The increase of my government and my peace knows no end. Amen. So in this beautiful atmosphere today, in his presence, and those watching online, we're going to take up our substance and we're going to return to him what is his as an act of our heart, not the obligation of any law, not because a preacher begs, but just simply the response of our love for him. Father, I return this to you. And if you're sowing today, know that increase was always on his mind. And he put laws in place, laws in operation that would ensure that when a man sows, he reaps a full harvest of not only 30 and 60, but a hundredfold return. Come on, let's bless the kingdom today. Let's invest in the kingdom today. In Jesus' precious name, the envelopes are right there on your seats. Hallelujah. For those that are given by the way of techie gadgets, amen, your phone. You can simply text your giving to 84321. You can also give by cash up dollar sign millennial church. Amen. So amazing. So amazing. So amazing. Come on, everybody, let's give to the Lord today. Information's on your screens. Praise God. If you're posting in your offering, your check, P.O. Box 470, and the rest is on your screen. Praise God. God is so faithful to us. Say this with me. I believe exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask or think, according to his power that is at work within me now. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him. Let's sing that again, Sam. Ushers, go ahead and serve the people today. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. 
the Son of Man, the Son of God, His kingdom come. Jesus, redemption sacrifice, oh, now glorify, now justify, his kingdom come, and his kingdom will know no end, and his glory shall know. It's been a powerful, powerful two or three weeks as we've had this run up to Christmas. This time next Sunday, we will be celebrating the Christmas season, amen, with Hosanna. You don't want to miss it. Bring your kids, bring your families. I know different people will be traveling, but those that are here, that's not the one to watch online. That's the one to come and that celebrate the King together. Amen. Glory to God. There will be service Tuesday night, this week also, and then Tuesday after Christmas. And these two Tuesday nights will be up in the chapel. Amen. We're up there Tuesday night as they prepare down here for next Sunday. Amen. But it's going to be so, so powerful to be together and celebrate Christmas. Amen. And that is next Sunday morning, 10 a.m. But as we've been running up to this, we've been hearing God's goodness. We've been hearing his great joy. Amen. We've been hearing that it's for everyone everywhere. And today I want to bring you just a little cherry on the cake. His family, kings and priests. Martin Luther said this, faith is born and preserved in us by preaching why Christ came, what he brought and gave to us and the benefits we obtain when we receive him. As Christians, we are all kings and priests and therefore lords of all. In Exodus 19, 5 and 6, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice and truth and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own peculiar possession and treasure from among and above all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, consecrated, set apart to the worship of God. These are the words you shall speak to the Israelites. In Deuteronomy 14, 2, for you are a holy people set apart to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a peculiar people to himself above all the nations of the earth. Isaiah 61, 3 to 6, you shall also be so beautiful and prosperous as to be thought of as a crown of glory and honor in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem, exceedingly beautiful in the hand of your God. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. People will speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of the nations and the glory once that all of your captors shall be yours. Titus 2, 14 who gave himself on our behalf that he might redeem us, purchase our freedom from all iniquity and purify for himself a people to be peculiarly his own people who we are, 
eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is good and filled with beneficial deeds. 1 Peter 2, 5, 9, and 10. Come, and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house for a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. In the New Living Translation, it says this, you are living stones that God is building into a spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priests. Through the meditation or the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's very own people. Another translation says it like this. Like living stones, let yourselves be assembled into a spiritual house. A holy order of priests who offer up spiritual sacrifices that will be acceptable to God through Jesus the anointed. But you are a chosen people set aside to be a royal order of priests, a holy nation, God's own so that you may proclaim the wondrous acts of the one who called you out of darkness into shimmering light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. The Bible speaks for itself that any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. What was heralded that night, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, glad tidings towards all men. It didn't leave one person out. He reached for you and he reached for me. He reached down through the generations to those that have not yet even been born. And he said, I have come for you. You see, to simply think that after you received Jesus as Lord and Savior, that you were just some ordinary person going somewhere in a boring direction is very, very wrong. Scripture tells us that he gave us the very life of Christ himself. And ladies and gentlemen, when you read Scripture, it does not point to anything boring. It points to the greatest adventure that you could ever dream of happening in your life. I declare over you the best is yet to come. I declare over you that you were commissioned to rule and to reign as kings in this life. You were not to be the tail. You were to be the head. You were to be the majority, never the minority. You were supposed to be him. He even made it possible that you would be a partaker of his grace. Smith Wigglesworth said this, God never intended his people to be ordinary or commonplace. His intentions were that they should be on fire for him, conscious of his divine power, realizing the glory of the cross that foreshadows the crown. I declare it in the name of Jesus that the best days of your life are right up ahead of you, that you're stepping into days of glory, days of heaven on earth, days of the blessing, not the curse, days of freedom, not bondage. Revelation 1, 5, and 6 says this, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead, first to be brought back to life, and the prince, the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who ever loves us and has once and for all loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood, 
and formed us into a kingdom, a royal race, priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power and the majesty and dominion throughout the ages forever and ever. I could say that over and over and over. To him be the glory and the power and the majesty. Come on, say it with me. To him be the glory, the power and the majesty and the dominion throughout the ages forever and ever. What a way to start your day. To him be the glory. The message translation says, glory and strength to Christ who loves us, who blood washed our sins for our lives, who made us a kingdom, priests for his father forever. And yes, he's on his way. Shut it out. He's on his way. Another translation says, may you experience God's favor and rest in peace that comes from the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is coming. From the seven spirits, the perfect spirit, constantly before God's throne, and from Jesus the anointed, the witness who is true and faithful, the first to emerge from the death's cold womb, the chosen ruler over all the kings and rulers of the earth, to the one who loves us and liberated us from the grip of evil deeds through his very own blood and who established us to be his kingdom and priests for our God. His father, may glory and power be his throughout all the ages. Shout it out, may glory and power woo, be his throughout all ages. Amen and amen. David Ebiemi said this, if you are born again, you are born to reign. I'm going to say it again. If you are born again, you are born to reign. There is nothing about this that you're to live like a worm, just just popping out your head out of the soil every time you hear the pitter-patter of rain. You were born to shine, ladies and gentlemen. You were born to put on the garments of praise. You were born to put on the armor of light. You were born to be him in this world. In the name of Jesus, come on. It is time to step it up. If you believe I shout a big amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm stepping it up this year. As we go into 24, I'm stepping it up. In Revelation 20, verse 6, blessed, happy to be envied and holy, spiritually whole of unimpaired innocence and proved virtue is the person who takes part, shares in the first resurrection. Over them, the second death exerts no power of authority but they shall be ministers of God and of Christ the Messiah, and they shall rule along with him a thousand years. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. It's about to get busy. Praise the Lord. Another translation says, blessed and holy are those who are included the first time that people come back to life. The second death has no power over me. Shout it out. The second death has no power over me. Even if you don't understand this today, shut it out. The second death has no power over me. Something good is happening to me. Amen. This year I'm going to live with great joy. The goodness of God is manifesting in my life. Something good is happening. Something good is happening. Something good is coming. Someone good is coming. Jesus is coming. I'm going to shout it again. Jesus is coming. In another translation, it says this, happy and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death cannot touch such men. They shall be priests of God and of Christ. That's me right there. And shall reign with him for the thousand years. Come on, shout it out. Ruling and reigning is what I do. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on, shut it out again. Ruling and reigning is what I do. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. Ruling and reigning is what I do. You don't understand the pressure I'm under. Ruling and reigning is what I do. Yeah. Romans 5, 17. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness put them in right standing with themselves, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Shout it out again, I rule. I rule. Romans 1, 9, for God is my witness whom I serve with my whole spirit, rendering priestly and spiritual service in the preaching of the gospel and telling the good news of his son. 
Romans 15, 16, in making me a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, I act in the priestly service of the gospel of God in order that the sacrificial offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, consecrated and made holy by the Spirit. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this, one of the greatest rewards that we ever receive for serving God is the permission to do still more for him. I heard coming out of my spirit a few weeks ago, use me more in 24. I want you to shout it out right now like you mean it. Use me more in 24. Come on this side. Use me more in 24. How many people believe that today? How many people believe that greater is still manifesting? That the greater things have yet to come? Greater things are still coming in the name of Jesus. Come on, we don't know everything that's going to happen in 24, but we know that it's going to be a great year. We know that it's going to be a great door of utterance. We know it's going to be a great door of opportunity. We know that we're going to be blessed. If you believe that, shout amen. We know that we're going to have life. In life abundance. Oh, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be like that. Well, then you need to come on over to my house. Because in my house, there's going to be joy unspeakable and full of glory. In my house, there's going to be healing. In my house, there's going to be wealth. In my house, there's going to be blessing and not cursing. In my house, there's going to be peace that passes all understanding. Come on, in your house, shut it out, in my house. Come on, in my house, we're going to have heaven on earth. We're going to have angelic assistance. We're going to have the goodness of heaven. We're going to have the goodness of God. Something good is happening in my house. Romans 8, 17 to 19. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. I love this here. In verse 19, for even the whole creation, all nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons, you and me, to be made known. The whole creation waits for the revealing, the disclosing of our sonship. Well, this year, something in me is going to be revealed to creation. I'm going to say it again this year. Something in me of my sonship is going to be revealed to creation. I am what the world is waiting for. I'm going to say it again. I am what the world is waiting for. Look at your neighbor and say, you are what the world is waiting for. This year is going to be filled with goodness. It's going to be filled with the blessing. Oh, I tell you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Amen. The world may be falling apart. It may be shaken in every way that it can. But me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. We're going to go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And mountains and hills are going to break. Come on, don't make me preach this morning. Mountains and hells are going to break forth before me. I love it. From the book of Isaiah, those mountains that stand before me will be brought low. Valleys and ditches that want to cause me to fall into them. A man will be raised up. Crooked places will be made straight. He goes before me. He comes behind me. He's the voice inside me. Amen. He's not the voice behind me. He's the voice inside me. He leads and guides me into all truth. I have nothing to fear of this incoming year. Shout it out. I have nothing to fear. Oh, say it again. I have nothing to fear of this incoming year. Second Corinthians. I was going to say Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 5, 2021. <laughs> oh. We are Christ's ambassadors. I'm an ambassador. Not some little Christian deadbeat, shamed into the corner. Persecution making me that I don't want to announce my arrival. Well, too late. You wear him. 
You walking into a dark den, I'm telling you, you're going to rise every demon in that helly situation. I mean, don't you be afraid of you being recognized, ladies and gentlemen. You're already on the list. Look at you near and say, I made it, praise the Lord. And I made it to the greatest list of all, the Lamb's Book of Life, in the name of Jesus. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. If you're living a weak, anemic, powerless existence, then you must be walking in shame. Because he says, where there is no shame, there's power. I'm going to say that again so that you can take your second breath. Where there is no shame, there's power. I'm going to say it again. Where there is no shame, there's power. That's what it says. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Everywhere I go, I bring a light. Everywhere I go, I light it up. Everywhere I go, that light brings the fight. I don't go looking for the fight. The fight comes to me, but I have the name that is above every name. Why? Because I am here to rule and to reign and to be what he is in this world in the name of Jesus. And I I'm not going to hide my light under a bushel. Shut it out. I am not ashamed. It's time to go home. It's just getting good. Great joy is coming to my house. Great joy. Great joy. Well, Pastor, you don't understand the persecution I'm under. Well, you must be a man of the word. You must be a woman of the word. And I congratulate you that such persecution has come to you because it says that persecution will come for the word's sake. And I congratulate you. I salute you. You must be doing something so powerfully right. It's the one who's not being persecuted that I'm concerned about. Well, they don't like me. Join the club. Why do you want everybody to like you, you vain thing? Why do you want to be invited to every party? You don't want to look like that. Eating your way through Christmas at every party. Thank God for the one that you've been invited to. It's saving your waistline. Stop thinking that you've been ignored because someone didn't invite you. There's always one invitation to a party that will change your life. It will add to your life. It will always give you something. Oh, give you something beyond anything that a natural party could ever give you. It is the invitation to spend time with the Father. It is the invitation to spend time with Christ himself. Oh, how much time we spend in such frivolous nonsense. Thinking our lives away, processing why people don't care. When we have a Bible that tells us that he didn't go cheap on us. He's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. Aren't you glad that God isn't El Chipo? He said you were fearfully and wonderfully made. That's why Satan wants to come and take away from that. But I left the blood. Yes, right. Yes. I left the blood. Lift your hands all over this room. Now, if you feel a heaviness on you this morning, you need to get it off. God has given you a two-hour window to get it off. And it's your choice if you keep it. Because he came. 
to meet you at your request. And it's time to be free from it. I sense that by the Spirit of the Lord. That was a word from someone. It's like bring this to a close. In Him we live and move and have our being. As even some of our poets have said, we are His offspring. I am empowered. I am equipped. I wasn't left low. I was raised to the highest seat that could be conferred upon any part of creation, the sons of God. I am full of God not because of my prayer time, but because he came and made his home in me. I became his son, he became my father. Colossians 2.10 And you are in him made full and having come to fullness of life in Christ you too are filled with the Godhead Father, Son and Holy Spirit and reach full spiritual stature and he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. In Colossians 3, it says this in verse 12, clothe yourselves therefore as God's own chosen ones his own picked representative. And in Philippians 3.20, it says this, that we are the citizens of the state of the commonwealth, the homeland, which is heaven. And from it also we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, a Savior. You see, as we come to a close of this great service, the revelation is this, that you did not choose him. He chose you. And the Bible clearly leaves you with all finality, that you were literally handpicked by God be part of his family and for that I give him all the praise and all the glory you know I see it in my daughter I see it in all my family but when they're asked for their name they don't cower back and say oh Brady see that sense of honor, proud. They don't shriek back from it. They don't, oh, Brady. When Jeremy is out with us at times and she's maybe a side off and somebody says to her, and who are you? And she says, oh, I'm Jeremy Brady. I said, oh, is Pastor Paul your dad? She goes, oh, yes. She doesn't go, hmm. She always, yeah. 
but an immediate in the transaction of honor. Something takes place. As we go into this Christmas, we wear his name. When somebody says, are you a Christian? Puff out your chest. Put your shoulders back. Sound, oh yes, could you tell? That's my dad. He's my father. He's my Jesus. And I love him with all my heart. Come on, lift your hands and just tell him how much you love him today. It's just a simple message that we're kings and priests, part of the family of God, the sons of Almighty God, the ones who he came for handpicked. Everything is going to be okay. Settled forever. History will never repeat itself. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord thanks and honor and praise. Do you believe there's room for you? How many people's glad you made the cut? How many people's glad that you're not waiting to be born again? How many people's glad that you've already been brought into the kingdom of God? How many people's glad that your children have got a head start? Amen, that you might have been first generation, but your children are going to be, I tell you, trailblazers. And they're going to do more than what you've ever done, say more than what you've ever said, be more than what you could ever thought you could have been. And that's the truth, ladies and gentlemen.